So um, in the assignment, um, when we look at that um, pre-writing, I just kind of wanted to go over that. So the annotated bibliography is an assignment many teachers ask you to do, and it's just you, saw, you have however many sources they tell you to get. So for this essay, we've got to have three. For your pre-writing between now and Friday, you have to have at least, I mean, for the whole essay, we have to have six. Right? For your pre-writing, you have to have at least three. If you did a topic question, I've actually already given you at least one. Okay, might have given you two. All right, depending on how much I got wrapped into your research, which I had to say, stop, stop, walk away. Right? I mean, like I really am telling myself that because I'm a nerd, love research. So. Anyway, so you, I already know you have at least one. Okay, so that means you need to find two others, right? And what an annotated bibliography is, is you cite the source, however many sources your teacher tells you, and then you have a paragraph under it. And they'll tell you what goes in that paragraph. Usually it's a summary, a discussion of that article. Usually it's just summary, just kind of here's what they say, not here's what I think about it. Now, pay attention when you get this assignment in the future. And I used to think only English teachers gave this assignment until I had students start coming back and telling me, when I went to UTEP, like we didn't have papers, but we had to do this and it counted like as much as a test or a paper. Okay, so pay attention to what they say because they might say, summarize it and respond, which would mean, what do you think about it, right? Um, now, a summary in college is not one or two sentences. We're talking about a well-developed paragraph where you're basically explaining this article to someone who has not read it. So it's not just this is what it's about, it is, here are the main points this person makes. And so you use some quotes, you, you know, you paraphrase some, you're putting in there, you're explaining, really taking an article that may be, you know, anywhere from five, six, seven pages long or 10 or 20. And, and again, whenever we, whenever you look at the video for next time, the reading and using academic articles, some of these journal articles, a lot of them are studies in there. That information is there. So if you're also, a person in that field, you could go repeat that study. So the middle part where they tell, here's how we did it, you don't have to read that part, okay? And I'll explain that, so watch that video. But anyway, in your annotation, you're gonna have that. Now, I require two other things. I require that you have for each, for your annotation. And so all we're doing is, this time, for Friday, you'll be turning in um, three citations, and just one of them will have an annotation. On Monday, so we'll then we'll bring it in. It's a rough draft, okay? So have those citations down, and then if there's anything wrong, we get it fixed up. You see how this is working? So that when you turn it in to me on Monday, the first one fixed, it's correct, right? We'll help each other with the grammar in it. It's fixed. Also, you use that source in your paper, it's fixed. So we're doing this step by step. And then on Monday, there'll be another one due with three also. It's three different ones. So by the time you've turned in two pre-writings, you've got six sources, okay? Now, when you sit down and write your paper, you may kind of decide that this one doesn't work. I need to find another one, whatever. But you'll have cited at least six things and done a little bit of writing about two of them. Okay, so what do I require for you to have in that annotation? Um, one, I'm asking that it's 300 words, so you're going to need to do that word count, because if you don't do the word count, I just assume it isn't, because I am not spending my time counting words, and any teacher who asks for a word count will say the same thing, right? Um, that's why you do it on the computer, and you highlight it and ask it how many words it is, okay? Um, so we're doing APA format, of course. You've got to turn it in time. Um, develop to length. You need to have the author's credibility. So why is this person credible, right? Why should we listen to this person on this topic? And we'll look at that. Um, <clears throat> you need to have a discussion of the source's main points, um, supporting arguments. So you'd be using some quotes, things like that. If you're using those quotes, we're going to have all that citation stuff, right? That author date location stuff. Um, and then um, a discussion of how the information may be used in your essay. So that'd be like your last sentence. And right now, I know, you haven't written the essay. I'm just asking you, what do you think? And I'm not, you're not married to it, okay? I'm just saying, what do you think? So you might say, I'm going to use this in the introduction because it's like a good attention getter. Or this has information for when I talk about, you know, the history and background section and when I talk about, you know, um, treatments that might work. 
Okay, I'm just thinking of some of the articles that I shared with you all. Um, so, or you could say, you know, right now I'm not sure, but I think it would work when I discuss this or that, right? And it can fit multiple places. You don't just have to use one article in one place because there is one I'm thinking of, and I think it's Antonio's, man, too bad, enough, right? It's about, you know, PTSD, and it goes through kind of the, the, the history of kind of, I mean, like it even talks about like the different names like shell shock in World War One, and um, I forget what they called it during Vietnam, but, you know, it has those. So there's like some history in it. So he might want to use that in the introduction. But then it also talks about different treatments and how they might work for different people. And so that would fit in another part of his paper, right? It may just be a guess. You may say, I don't know. I have to write this sentence. Well, I guess I'll use it here. That's okay, right? You need to write that sentence, even if you're faking it, okay? Because the thing is, is the more you kind of even in faking it start thinking about parts of the essay, the better it is for you because it'll help you focus it more, right? And when you get there, then you can make some decisions. So that's what goes in it. Credibility, three things. Credibility, the summary and discussion of the main points, and then where do you think it will you will use in your essay? Just right now. It's just your guess. Here's what I guess, okay? Um, so um, you can get Writing Center credit for this. If you go to the Writing Center, you know, one of the things about the Writing Center extra credit, if you take it with your first writing assignment, which this is, so you could take it either, well, if you wanted to go do it today or tomorrow or Friday, yeah, we're going to use it in class, do it in class, but you know, you're going to fix up, you're going to take home your draft from class, whatever you need to fix up, and turn it in Monday for the one-out grade. So you could do it Friday afternoon. The, I think the Via Verde Writing Center is open on Saturday. First, my policy for Writing Center is if you go with the first writing assignment, I'll give you up to 10 points. So you can make 110 on this first one. And remember, these... Um, assignments for your research paper, the pre-write, so the topic memo, the pre-writings, um, we'll do some in-class drafting, the workshop we do for it. Remember, the research paper as a whole is 50% of your grade. 30% of that is the paper, but 20% is your research paper. So 110 on a pre-writing, and then the second one, you could go to the Writing Center too, 105 on that, for t that's that much extra credit on 20% of your grade. That's where real extra credit counts, is when it applies to something that carries weight, just so as you know. Extra credit that applies to things that don't carry as much weight and make as much of a difference, right? So, so wink, wink, okay? Um, so I highly recommend that you make time to do that, okay? Um, so, and then at that point, you know, I may tell you here, I may tell you if a source is not acceptable. If I don't feel like this is a college-level source, I'll tell you no. Okay, you need to find a different one. All you got to do is find a different source and then sh substitute that in there, turn that into me again and sh or show me, and I'll be like, okay, cool, points back, bing. Okay, um, so, um, but again, we want to look at those. So I really want to see mostly journal articles, but then, of course, there are other things that, you know, I mean, so if you're writing about, um, for example, in, in Danielle's, you know, she was writing about bipolar disorder and, it was the National Association of Mental Health um, Issues. Well, they're a national professional organization for that. So yeah, it's, it's a website, but this is what they do. They're credible because this is their business. Um, so there's that. Um, oh, um, dissociative identity disorder? Who's? No? Oh, so somebody that left, man. It must have been Alicia. I think I got your name wrong. I don't know. Anyway, um, the American Psychiatric Association is one of the articles there. That's credible because this is what they do, right? This uh, psychiatric issue. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Um, this is Rudy's, and so this is APA format. Well, I'll show you the one that's in the whole format so you can see it. So what you're going to do is, if you have an idea for a title for your paper, cool, you can put it up there. Like, she's already... And, you know, she was already kind of thinking about this. If you don't, that's okay. You can just put pre-writing, right? And so she's got her citation. So how do we do that? We'll practice in a minute, okay? She's got her citation, APA format. This is a hanging indent. And then here's her um, annotation. So she starts out with credibility. That's the easiest thing to start out with. And generally, when you mention somebody the first time in your paper, 
throw in their credibility. Makes your paper a little longer. It's easier because really all you're giving is who they work for or what their degree's in. So it's not rocket science. But then if you do that every time, only that first time. Now, when she mentions Elgin again, she's going to trust we remember. Again, you're writing for college-level writers. They should be smart enough to remember three pages ago or turn back if they can't. Right. So Elgin, a psychologist and body image researcher at Northwestern University. Just like that. Remember APA, only last names. No initials, no first names, anything. Only last names. So Elgin, and here's her credibility, admits that her inspiration for her research was brought to fruition after listening to her undergraduate students who would obsess over their appearances and, and their quest to modify their bodies. Now, we don't have like that author date right here because what she's saying here is really just this is the overall summary. So where is that, right? Is it first? No, that's just overall and, you know, here she is. So now we're going to start getting to some specifics. In her TED Talk, An Epitome of Beauty Sickness, so YouTube is the big thing, right? Unless you're watching a whole movie on YouTube, which case, actually, we will later in the semester, okay? So then we would have the name of the movie wrecked, and we'd have YouTube, right, both in italics. But a TED Talk, 15, 20 minutes, is short, right? So we put that in quote marks. So an epitome of beauty in the sentence, Elgin, boom, there's our date right there, because we're fixing to give specifics explains that although there is legitimate scientific perspective of beauty, which is based largely on symmetry, modern perceptions of beauty have changed drastically. We could go to the, go to the, the um, video and we could stop it and say, look, it's right in here. Now, right now, neither MLA or APA make us put the timestamp. Right? That we could say this is, you know, one minute and 20 seconds into it. I think in the future they will. Makes sense. I mean, it really does. But right now they don't. So with a video, you don't have location. You just have author date, okay? Um, so, but you make sure, get those quotes, right? If they said it, get those quotes. A majority of American women today suffer from what Elgin has termed beauty sickness. So right here, this is her main point overall. If we had to sum this up, this is their main point. Um, and then these are details. It can be described as an obsession with appearance, a persistent lack of self-satisfaction with body image, and a strong and relentless drive to achieve beauty as it is defined by American society. Uh, um, it's actually England. I got in the habit of saying Elgin. Okay, England. Galen, yeah. No, the beauty sickness, bless you, is not an affliction specific to women. Men are just as susceptible as women, but, and notice here we have the quote, women are more likely to hate their bodies. Okay, so this is, men are just as susceptible as women, and we have this comma because we're showing contrast. I like ice cream, not liver. Men are as susceptible as, um, men are as susceptible, but women are more likely contrast one or the other. So here's an example of where she had to stop and say, wait, which rule do I need? We got that rule. It's extra information. Women spend more money on beauty and they spend more money, more time on beauty. And they are 10 times at greater risk for the anorexia bulimia. Elgin Englen, Engelen claims that it is impossible to engage with the world while chronically monitoring one's body appearance. Ooh, we could put a period there. So we got a colon. When you are beauty sick, you cannot engage with the world because the, between you and the world is a mirror. And it's a mirror that travels with you everywhere. You can't seem to put it down. Finally, England, and here, since she was just talking about this one source and this one writer, and she doesn't mention anybody else in between, whenever she gives her name again, she gets to skip wherever it is, right? She gets to skip the year, right? But once we go to a new paragraph, we got to remind people. And actually, if my paragraph was split over different pages, I would go ahead and put it in just in case. Because readers do read. I mean, teacher readers read, and they're looking for those signals. We talked about this. There are signs for them. So you can put it in every time. Or if you're in the same paragraph, nobody else knew is in there, you can skip it. Okay. But when you stop, start another one, 
England's suggestion to turn the tide against beauty sickness is to invest less in beauty. For example, if watching shows like America's Next Top Model, oh wait, the whole show, right? Because if you watched every episode, that's a lot of them. The episodes are little, quote marks, show gets italics, or read magazines like Cosmo, it's the whole magazine inside of it are articles, right, that go in the quote marks, um, makes people think more about their appearance. Stop watching and reading. She also suggests limiting mirror time, much like a parent limits their child's screen time, and stop worrying about the size of your thighs and think about the strength of your thighs, because those legs, after all, are the legs that walk you around in the world. And stop talking about your upper arms as though they are diseased. Those are arms that reach out and bring the things you love close to you. And we'll talk about this in just a minute. This article provides support for the idea there's a dark side to the desire for beauty and will be helpful in defining some of the terms and explaining both what can go wrong as ways to combat that. And so there's Rudy saying, hey, here's how I think I'll use it. And so she's just talking about kind of main ideas, just like that. Okay. So what she's done is, yeah, we didn't watch that video, but do you feel like you have a good sense of kind of overall, not just here's the topic, but you have a good sense of a number of the main things she talks about. And that's what you want. Remember, you're writing for somebody who has not read it, so you want to give them just a good kind of solid overview. If they want to read the whole thing, they'll go read the whole thing. All right. Now here, we have this again. We don't have location. If this was a page number, we would still have this in there, and then we'd also have, I forget if it'd go first or second, I'd look it up, okay? But we have this emphasis original. Okay, now she does have quote marks for emphasis, right? And it is in italics. How do you think, remember this is a TED talk, this is a video. How do you think that um, England said that word? Do you think she said diseased? Don't think about your um, upper arms as though they are diseased. Or do you think she said, don't think about your upper arms as if they're diseased? Or maybe she said diseased, right? She's on stage there. Y'all seen TED Talks, haven't you? I mean, surely your teachers have showed you TED Talks, right? This is like the new favorite of teachers around the world, right? And you can see England talking, you know, and, and we need to look at ourselves better and not think about our upper arms as if they're diseased, right? So when she says emphasis original, She's putting that in there to get across that tone and sound. If, in a quote, somebody has italicized something, or put it in all caps, don't put anything in all caps, but if you're quoting, you're saying, I'm doing it exactly like it, right? Which means, if it's in all caps, you should leave it that way, or else show you changed it, and we'll look at that next time, right? If it's in bold or underlined, you typically don't do any of that. You don't use italics. You don't use all caps. You don't use those quote marks, bold, under, unless you have a rule for it. We talked about quote mark rules today. T titles, quote marks. We talked about italic rules. Titles are the big thing. So here we know that this wasn't this way because it was talking. How do you put quote marks and italics in talking? Oh, my gosh. You do this. Right? It's about tone and your body language. So here, she's saying, look, in her TED Talk, she really put that emphasis on that. Now, if she wanted to add the emphasis, Rudy did, to like really talk about how people will see body parts that are normal, right? Because we don't look like Photoshop means we're actually alive. <laughs> this is good, right? Um, and if she wanted to like point out how people use that word for just being a natural human, and so Rudy was the one that emphasized it, she would put emphasis added. And the thing there is, remember, if you change anything in a quote, you need to show it. If you're using italics or quote marks or anything like that, and you don't know a rule for it, then you ask why. And you need to like somehow show that. If somebody else did it, then you need to explain to your reader why there are all caps in your paper. Okay? Because they'll be like, don't do that, or underline or bold or whatever. So if you put that emphasis original, then the teacher's like, okay, cool. Right? You weren't you didn't just like start throwing bold in on me because you just wanted to, right? Because you thought I was a dummy that didn't actually read your words and think about them. You know, that's what that is. That's why it's so offensive to have like 
all caps outside of quotes or bold or underline or that because it really says, you know, you're not really paying attention. You're not smart enough to get my concepts. Yeah, I forget that sometimes, you know, but then when I'm reading it, I'm like, duh. I mean, like, that's really my response. Duh, I get it. You don't have to, I'm not dumb, right? And, but that's, I mean, we're just insecure about we want to make sure that person gets our point. Be secure with yourself. That's the thing. And trust your reader to read carefully and thoughtfully, too. So, Okay, so what does this look like overall, though? And then you'll have two other citations. So she has two other sources. She uses a Lily Allen song because she's talking about how this kind of, you know, beauty and popular culture. And then she uses a Jean Kilborn. Oh, we saw that. And this is, you know, this is 1302. We saw that in the 1301 paper there because Jean Kilborn is, if you're looking at beauty, advertising, anything like that, she's one of the really foundational thinkers in this. So she has this um, citation too. So you'll have three citation and just an annotation for one of them. Okay, um, and this is what it'll look like when it's all together. So whenever it is, um, I mean, it's going to look like take your APA format you already have. You can either change this to a title you're thinking of, or you can just put pre-writing one. But pre-writing one, oh, look, she's got dying to be beautiful, source pre-writing one, right? I mean, if, if it's early. You don't have to have a title. You may just have pre-writing one. That's fine. Um, other one, one more. There we go. Um, and then you're going to have your author note. So you've already done this with your APA assignment. So you have this. You uploaded it, right? You have the file. Just go in and fix the things that need to be fixed. Um, and then there's her citation. So you can see it looks like. And what she did here is remember to get those. Um, here, let me let me steal some text here. Okay. Copy. And then let me go down here. So let's say that... Here is, you do your citation. Remember to get that citation. Don't enter and tab over. Highlight it, paragraph, under special, you want to choose hanging. See what y'all undo it, none, and then, and make sure you got zero, zero, don't add space right there, okay? All right, see there it is regular, so you just typed it up. The other thing you can do, you want me to show you magic, English teacher magic. You press control, and then you keep your finger on it, you press T. <gasps> Ta-da! Control, ta-da. Control, T. We'll give you that hanging indent, okay? And then right here, you know, once you're down here, you can, you'll have your annotation in there. So, uh, uh, where'd it go? Oh, okay, there it is, right? Now, you notice that in Rudy's, it is scooted over a little bit, and that does look nice and neat, I think. I don't know. I think it does, right? Um, and then you... Make sure, you know, because you can tell. The reason we do this hanging indent is when you're going through and you're looking at sources, if they're all flush to the margin here, it is murderous. And especially you get more than like four. It really is. Same reason that when we write, we start left to right. If, if you know, if you were in China, if you're writing in Hebrew, Hebrew you're going to go right to left the other way. But if all of a sudden in English, some people started going the other way, is that going to work? No, right? We're going to be like, I, I mean, yeah, you could read it. Like on Facebook, if you can read this, you're really smart and they've got it backwards. Okay, yeah, most people can read that. Okay, so you're really smart anyway. You don't need stupid tests, okay? Um, we could figure it out, but the thing is, for easy reading, what if they started doing that on, on road signs? Because you, you have to pause. takes you a little longer, right? We don't want to do that when we're driving. You need to see a sign and boom, process it just like that. You ever seen a sign that has like too many words and you're like, that's stupid. I mean, that's distracting me from my driving, right? No, road signs and they need to be predictable. That's why stop signs are red. Doesn't matter if it says stop or alto or whatever on it. Around the world, stop signs are red. Hospital signs are blue. Because of that, you don't even have to speak the language. If all of a sudden stop signs were turned to green, it would cause chaos, wouldn't it? So we're always doing things to help each other read clearly and easily, right? Whenever Instagram or Facebook or whatever does a new version and they change like the organizer, the organization of things, do people not freak out? Like I can't find anything. It's not like it used to be. This sucks. And then like three months later, they like don't even. And then the next one comes along and they're like, I like that one better, the old one, right? The one they hated on. Yeah, I've been there. Me too. Hated on. So, so 
this format is really important because it helps your readers. So what we can do if you want to have this kind of, and either way is fine. Here you can see the paragraph is there and it's there. It's like that. But if you want to indent it like that, you can. Okay. So that's all you'll do is you'll do your, you're using your APA format and then you'll put in um, cite three sources. So you just need to find three sources that you're probably going to use have your APA format and then you'll cite each one and with one of them do that annotation give the credibility discuss what it says you can use quotes from it you don't have to come up with all the words on your own this is why we like research because you get to use other people's words just do it responsibly right if you have page numbers you're gonna put that page number in okay citation citation because <gasps> you can go back and look at that so oh my gosh check this out hold on let me see what all do I want to close everything to the right, okay, and then I want to open all 16. Yes, I am. Yay! There we go. 16 tabs. Oh my gosh. So, as the last couple of days, as I've been answering your topic things, you know, I've sent you back, and I have letters printed out here. If you didn't do me a topic email, ma'am, we should talk, okay? So, one of them, wait, so who is doing the identity disorder? Who is that? Any, no, not here? Okay, so somebody is interested. In, yeah, no, no. Okay, somebody's interested in doing this. I wanted to talk about, you know, whenever you um, start doing the citation, and it is all about 100% about look at it and fill it and just follow the instructions. You can, again, use citation generators. When they're wrong, it's your grade. And I see a lot of them that I'm like circling. In fact, there's one that puts, you know, you've got author date at the end, like where you're doing your citation. So, for example, here, when we go down to inside the tab, and let's say we want to cite a journal article, because that's what each one of you have, okay, um, an article in a journal. And I'm just going to click there because that's close enough. Um, so if we want to cite a journal article, whoops, we're going to put all the author's last names, so their last name initials, you know, periods with the initials, commas. We're going to put the year, the article title. Notice it's just in regular font. And then we're going to put the journal title, and that's going to be in italics. Okay. And then we're going to have volume issue number. Some of the other examples show the, all of them. If you just have one thing, you just put one. And then you put the pages that that appeared on in the journal. Okay. Now, many of the articles you find, you can either read on like the library web page or whatever in HTML, or you can get it in PDF. Like I said, if you get that PDF, it will make your life so much easier. Because just being able to do page number for location all the time is the easiest thing. Okay, so it will make your life easier. So that is exactly how we cite. I mean, that's it. If we had something from the web, then we'd cite it this way. Same thing, name, look, title, journal article, volume issue, page numbers. Oh, here we have a DOI. If your article has a DOI and you got it off the web, you put it there, okay? If your article had a web page, okay, then notice this, same thing, name, title, oop, journal, retrieved from, and we put the web page. But look, we put the URL for the journal homepage. So this is University of Iowa, whatever they're, this is just the homepage for the journal, not this article. If it was, say the journal was, um, say that's actually where the journal is, right? This is the college, but say it's University of Iowa um, Press Org dot org right then that's all we'd put in this Kavanaugh piece when we look at new internationalist it's from new internationalist the Kilbourne um, or Kavanaugh from those ones we were looking at on the other essay um, it's from this article online that's called new internationalist and so their website is newint dot org now to get to that actual article we read it's going to be slash blah 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 whatever right but if it's a journal article, all we got to do is just put the basic homepage, okay? Um, so, easy peasy. If you've got a database, same thing here. If you've got DOI, you put that there. But here's the deal. If you got it off the web or a database, but it's print and it looks just like the journal. So, for example, here we look at this and we've got 
the title, we've got all the authors, we've got this abstract, and then we've got, this is from the Harvard Review of Psychiatry. This is a journal. We've got, there's their, there is their um, homepage, but we've got volume, number, July, August, 2006. We've got these page numbers. If we had the Harvard Journal of Review of Psychiatry in our hands, this might have some color on it, I doubt it, but it, would, it actually would look just like this. It'd just be in our hands. We can cite this as print. It's the same reading this as if we were reading it. So if you have a PDF that has all this information, we can cite it as print, and that's a lot easier. Check this one out. So who has, um, ah, genes, learn from stress how infantile pro um, trauma programs us for, for depression. Oh, somebody, depression and genetics or environment. Like none of y'all are going to admit to actually having your own topics. Because you're going to look like a fool when I call your name and I say, oh, you're the one that did this. Let's see, Ashley Maldonado. Ashley. Oh, music in industry, negative stereotypes, right? Oh, Ashley, there we go. Okay. Um, some of these got, like, printed. I don't know. I was trying to. Um, oh, um, drugs and depression, right? Self-medicating. There we go. Cool. Oh, wait, here we go. There. Kyle. Oh, vegetarianism. So, um, Benefits that a normal diet wouldn't have? Is it harmful? So really, you know, yeah. Oh, wait, here we go. Vegetarianism. Cool. Oh, wait, there's two. I don't know. I'm going crazy. Samantha. Yes. All right. Renaissance. Change literature. Philosophy. Renaissance. This may just be too big. You may have to narrow this. But I did look. There is some renaissance in the rebirth of culture. There we go. Ashley. Cancel. Yeah. Okay, cool. So Ashley. Meet Ashley. Okay, there we go. Right. Yeah, no, wait, Ashley, meet Ashley. Sorry. Did y'all already know each other? No? Okay. Uh, how technology is affecting development in children today? Um, personal experiences with that one I couldn't, I wasn't quite sure if we can talk about that if you're, if you're really committed to it. But check that out. And then Christine, she left. Oh, art affects society as a whole. Oh, dude, art. I got really cool art things. Oh, wait, and then Antonio, PTSD. So you have some things. So um, when we look at this, for example, and that's the thing I wanted, I'm bringing these up because I want to show you is that like here, this is not, don't cite something you just have an abstract for. Obviously, I went to the, you know, um, the, there, this is actually full on the, on the, um, College, the database, the library search, right? Now, when it comes up, look, you can see this page doesn't look very journaly, right? But it, that's just kind of there. When they put it online, they actually add this extra stuff just so that it has all of that with it. And it has everything we need, the, uh, the title, the authors, um, and then we know this is from um, you, um, Epigenics, 5.3, um, so that's volume issue and the page numbers. But look, check it out. On the next page, you can see if we had that journal in our hand, it looks just like it. So we can cite it as print. Now, the other thing you need to learn to look around at the article itself. Here, this gives the authors, and then it tells what this says is that it says Max Planck Institute of Psychiatry, Munich, Germany. So what this means is they're all from there. So when you need that credibility, if you have journal articles, it's usually right there. Here, um, sometimes it's at the top, sometimes it's at the bottom. Now we have PhD, MDs, all of that. Do not put those abbreviations in your paper. If you want to say somebody is a doctor of something, say a doctor of medicine, a doctor of psychiatry, a doctor of Renaissance literature, okay? But don't put PhD, DR, none of that. We don't do those. You know, and you only need to say that once in the credibility, and after that, people can remember, right? They got the smarts. Um, so this one doesn't have all those things here, but look at the bottom. Look at yours if you have one. Look at it and see if you can find where are, who, oh, well, I only gave you the first and second page. And a lot of times that credibility may be at the bottom, it may be at the side, it may be different places. But a lot of times you'll find that credibility in the article itself when you get um, when you get a um, journal article. If it's not, then you can look up 
those. Now, if you have like this many people in your credibility, you do not need to give everybody's credibility where they went to school, where they work, okay? The first person, Bethany L. Brand, whoever is listed first is considered the lead author. So you can say Brand, you know, and her colleagues, you know, or Brand, who works at. So we would just need to figure out where Brand works, okay? And we could look her up. That's what the Internet's for, right? Um, Brand, who works at Sussex University um, in the, what is this about? Oh, okay, um, in the, you know, um, psychiatric specialization department and her colleagues did, did research on this, right? So you don't have, when you have a bunch of people, you do not need to give credibility for all of them. You can just talk about that lead person, the lead researcher, and then you just say, give his or her credibility, and then you just say, and everybody else. But don't ditch everybody else. If I made y'all do group work and only gave one of you the grade, wouldn't, and like, okay, and wouldn't the rest of you be kind of pissed? Wouldn't you say, I want a grade too? Yeah? No, y'all are like, I don't want 100, no. Uh, and no, you would say, I want my 100, I don't want a zero. Everybody in there contributed to this. So in your paper, when you don't give that credit to everybody, then that's the way. Now remember, remember, remember the 4th of no 5th of November, the gunfire, treason, and gunpowder, treason, and plot. I can see of no reason why the 5th of November should ever be forgot. Oh, wait, remember... In both the in-text citation section and the references citation section, it tells you what do you do? Do you get because if you have more than so many authors, you get to take some shortcuts both in the in-text and in the um, references at the end. So, like if we have eight or more authors, check it out. We get to single two or three, right? Eight or more. Um, Oh, we get to put an ellipsis dot, so we get to, you know, shorten it to so many, okay? But in the paper, we get to, we don't have to put their, everybody's names, but we get to do this thing where the first time, like with three to five, we list them all, and then later on on, we put at all, and that just means Berkowitz and everybody else. At all means everybody else. But if you leave that at all off, then you're just saying Berkowitz. And he's the only one who's getting the credit, and everybody else is going to come griping to you, saying, I did the work. I want a 102. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, let me find some of these that uh, system problem occurred. Okay. Um, oh, here we go. Kyle, there we go. Vegetarian, being a vegetarian, health benefits and hazards. Oh, my gosh, all of these people. But look. It tells exactly where they're from. Now, you have a whole lot of them. You really don't want to say, you know, there's some from here, some from I mean, That's just bulky in your writing. You want to get that credibility in, but get in and get out. So you can say Stan Stanisic, right, because we're just using those last names, and um, just go oh, Svetlana and her team, who are all researchers and practitioners in you know, medical and health, whatever, you look at it and kind of sum it up in your mind. So you can kind of summarize, right, point out that, or, you know, present um, an article that, whatever it is, right? And when we look at this article, oh, here we go. Let's see. That's there. And so notice these. What are these? Citations. References. Look, this is actual APA in the real world, how it works. As you're reading your article, if you come to something and you're like, whoa, that's really good. Wait, I want to know more what this says. Look at the references. Go find that article. Okay? So that is actually a very legitimate way of doing research. When we look at the first of this one, okay, um, look, notice there's one, 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 two, one. There's little um, superscripts, and so this tells us, here, these are from these people are from this university. These people are from this institute. This university, this institute. So you can say um, whatever her um, Stanisic, right, and her team, who are who are all um, you know um, members of a univers of or I'd say um, professors at universities or you know work in 
the hygiene or public health industries. Oh, that just sums that all up, right? So just like that. So don't give them all. If you have two, you might want to give both, but other than that. Um, and then you can see, look, we know if you're quoting this part, we know, look, there's page 63, right, for your location. We know we've got, here's the title. And notice, look, they use that at all, too. So this is stuff that really happens. Oh, there we go. This is in the journal Meat Technology. Uh, and it's volume 59. We know it's 2018. I don't know what that one's for, but we'll figure it out later. <laughs> okay. And it's 63 through 70. So the thing is, is when you get these articles, people are like, and see here, this one opened up. We can um, just click on the PDF. <clears throat> but the other thing, if you get there from something like that, like here's author affiliations. So School of Public Health and School of Medicine at Loma Linda University. This one is 1112, right? So, um, you know, this team of authors um, all work at Loma Linda University, just like that, right? Um, so look at that when you're doing your searches. If it goes from here to there, look at that. And this is another one where we have this kind of information here. And then, but again, we can see that it is the the actual thing. This one, Samantha, right? Oh God, I remembered it for more than 20 minutes, for more than 10. I'm so proud. Got to get better with names, not really. But this one is a website. Obviously, that looks like a website, right? Um, one of the things about websites is, first of all, make sure. Like this, um, I think it's okay this, I would say, is kind of borderline. Like, you could totally use a website like this, but you want to be careful. Like, don't, if you're doing anything historical, do not use history.com, right? You can look at it, but then it's kind of like an encyclopedia. Like, they're just taking stuff from all over and putting it together. So one of the things I'd say with a website, you generally want it to be either an association or a group that is very much like the American Psychi Psychiatry, <laughs> Psychiatry Association, well, yeah, they're, that's their deal, right? If we were talking about, so that's another APA, American Psych, if we were talking about APA citation, we were going to use sources, we could use our writer's reference, but I would go to the APA website. Um, so think about professional organizations, things like that. Those websites are pretty good government. You know, of course, <clears throat> you know, how much trust government and everything, but still you can, you can in college use governmental websites as fairly trustworthy, okay? So if we're doing something about food and nutrition, we might look at Department of Health and Human Safety. Um, if we're looking at um, the um, National Institutes of Health is part of government, comes under that, so the NIH website. Um, but here, this is not any of those. Um, so couple of things you want to do. One, I would say when you don't have any of those and just have a regular website or just kind of like this really looks like it is just um, kind of a magazine, right? Online magazine, blog, website in general. Um, one of the things you want to do is definitely go and see, um, do the about us and see who these people are, right? No, I do not want to enter my email. Thank you. Okay, so um, live science, okay, for the science Greek, that's great. Art history launched in 2004, just three team members. Um, oh, their news and astronomy site is space.com. Um, live science staff, okay. So one of the things is I would always look is do they actually put their staff on there, which doesn't guarantee anything, right? Um, but we do know that this is written by one person. Right? And again, like for organizations and things like that, often you won't have the name. But as a general website, we do have somebody who's standing behind it. Now, that also doesn't guarantee anything. When you watch that video for next time, pay attention to that, what I talk about with psychology today. It is not a good college level source, okay? But it can lead you to others, just like Wikipedia. You can hit those references at the bottom and find sources, right? Um, so I would say it's really kind of important to see where are these people coming from and what are they doing. Um, and so this, the nice thing is, is that this does give us what have people done before. Now, if you use a newspaper, obviously that journalist isn't going to have <coughs> a specialty in everything, 
right? A journalist may write about space one day, <coughs> history the next, and, you know, school lunches the next day. Their credibility is about who do they work for, right? If they work for the New York Times, if they work for the National Enquirer, a little iffy, right? You know, <laughs> Elvis is an alien. Oh, okay, well, maybe. I'm not sure, right? Um, <coughs> so, you know, that's something to think about. With So with, with if you have a newspaper thing and a newspaper reporter or a magazine writer, they're not going to have specialty in that field. So what you can say again is so-and-so, a writer for the New York Times. So here we would have, um, I think it was Jennifer... Jenna, <coughs> Jesse, I knew it was a J. Uh, it's not Jesse J, though. Come on. Oh, dude, she's not listed here. Huh. Well, let's see. First of all, oh, but look, we should be able to open a link. And that's where you really have to stop and read the web. I know we all think we can read the Internet. But you stop and look around what's around there, okay? So, <coughs> contributing writer for Live Science covers animals' health, other general science. Um, her work has appeared in Jewish Daily Forward, National Geographic Traveler, Intelligent Traveler, Killing the Buddha. I mean, she's like well published, right? Um, finishing her master's degree in, in nonfiction at George Mason as a, um, let's see, a bachelor's of art. So, what would I say about her? I would say, um, Zele, who is a writer, um, I would just say who is a writer for live science, for live science, live science website. As long as I felt like I had vetted live science, and it seems like they are hiring people who are, you know, got some chops under them, whether it's just in terms of writing or whatever. Okay, but I would make sure I was okay with it, and I wasn't sure. I'd ask my teacher, "Are you okay with this as a source?" Okay, um, so I would think, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have given this to you, obviously, I didn't think it was okay, but I think it's a great example of, because I did want to pull up a website as an example. So we have the title, we have the author, we have the date, we don't have page numbers, do we? What we have is we have those section um, section things, and we'll look at those, I'll bring in a handout next time, and we'll look at those more specifically, how do you do that with location, okay? Um, let's see, media exposure and children, wait, wait, okay, right, so again, that video that you're going to watch explains how do you make sense out of all this crazy sciencey stuff, right, you don't have to read all of it, <laughs> Okay, especially when some of these are really long. This one's only 11. I think, Kyle, one of the ones I, I suggested for you is like 30 pages. Okay, <laughs> yeah, you don't have to read all of that, right? Um, but again, we've got um, the title, and here we have, you always want to make sure when you get a source, just double check. Here's the authors, and right here it tells us where they work, who they are, right? And then down here we have the volume, and on the other page it tells us what journal it's from, all of that kind of stuff. So the key point is ethnic identity, self-esteem, viability. Oh, rap music, empowering risk influence, journal of youth studies. There's all of that information there. Here is, oh, Travis and Bowen. So here is where they work, what they do. So, um you can see, I just want you to see that all that information is there. You just got to look around for it. Okay. Cool beans. Self-medication hypothesis of depression and aggression in cannabis-dependent subjects. Whoa, again, there's their, their cred, where they work at. And, and this one's long, too. And so, yeah, this stuff in the middle, you don't have to read. You don't have to read. Okay. You can if you want to. And one of these days, this may be your field, and you may, then you would want to, right? Because then it, it's there, it matters to you. So same thing here. You'll notice this also gives their um, names and dates, and, and like at the bottom and everything's all this right here, okay? So, so here's what I want you to do is I want you to, and if you don't have an article, find somebody, or you can do it together if you've got articles. I want you to cite what I gave you. 